Before I begin with the radiator, there's just another little job I want to tackle. And I'll need a bit of wood to do it. There. It'll just make these pipes nice and sturdy. Well, yesterday I just saw the opportunity to uh, do those pipes a little bit better, a little bit of sort of uh, strengthening an extra pipe clip. So that's what I've been doing now, really only a five minute job, but uh, made slightly more tricky by the fact that it's a bit inaccessible. Uh, but it's all done now, so let's just have a quick look. The isolation valves are nice and secure now. Right, on to the next part of the job. I want to take this radiator off. It looks all right from where you're looking, but if you look underneath, all the sort of undersides of the bars are rusted and they're all very, very craggy. Uh, it's just horrible now. So it's been on there since about 2006, 2008, something like that. So it's done all right. And of course it's got isolator valves, so there's no problem just uh, isolating the system. And uh, then when I take the radiator off, I've only got what water there is in the radiator to deal with. Now the only thing is, that valve doesn't sound all that happy to me. Should it be doing that? Mm. That one only turns quarter of a turn. I can't remember if it's supposed to. Obviously one's the inlet and one's the outlet. Or are they, in fact, both just the same thing? I mean, one will be connected to the inlet and one will be connected to the outlet, but can't see any physical difference between them. So there's the thing, isn't it? We put valves on these things so that when we want to service something, we can use the service valves uh, to turn the thing off. And then the service valves end up not working properly and needing to be replaced. In which case, if they have to come off, all the water in the pipes is going to come out. It won't drain the whole system, but there'll be quite a lot that will come out. Uh, so I'm going to take the rad off and see if these valves are holding if they're you know locking off the water properly and if they're not probably i'll have to pop the rad back on for a minute while i go out and get some more valves there's a couple of things bothering me uh, one thing is i've made the pipe tails coming out of the wall uh, to suit exactly this radiator and these valves obviously i'm going to get different radiator maybe different valves I'm really hoping that I don't have to take off all the cladding to get to the elbow at the bottom of the pipework, sort of sweat that off, you know, loads of heat to get that off, clean all the manky end of the pipe up from solder, put a new elbow and put a longer piece of copper on, you know, that's the right faff, not least to the fact that all this have to come off. So a lot to think about, I've not been looking forward to this, but I've turned those valves off and I'm just going to disconnect the radiator now and see where I go from there. So uh, as the other day, uh, of course there's suction holding the water in, that's why I took that uh, top cap out of there. And that's just a question of a sort of controlled, or hopefully controlled release of the uh, water from the radiator. So uh, improved on yesterday's jar with proper tray. Don't want to get too professional, but uh, definitely should get some more of these. This is not really the thing. You don't want to uh, mark the chrome, obviously. 
with the water running nice and clear, I make a start on the fixings. But I'll leave that one for now. get as much of that water out as I can before I go for the big release. It's a small radiator so it's not a problem obviously when you're doing a very large radiator ideally you want two of you because you know when you take it off you're going to need to sort of tip it into something nice have a nice big bucket on standby but uh, I shan't run into too much trouble here because the floor's tiled anyway so and that water's coming out really nice and clean obviously it's a mix of coolant and water uh, but it's not black or rusty or anything, which is always a good sign for the system. Now I can tackle that last fixing. Leaving the radiator free to come away. Nope bit of black gunge in the bottom but uh, fairly localised. And uh, let me just show you why I wanted to change that. It's uh, pretty disgusting really. What I'm doing there, I'm just dabbing a little bit of water out of the top of the valves and then later I can check if that's sort of filled up again or started overflowing uh, then I know my valves aren't sealing properly. There's a system drain cock here if I need it. Let's get the rest of those mountings off. I use pretty big screws to hold them in. You can't be too careful, can you? Okay, so I've uh, cleaned those valves up and taken off the uh, radiator mountings. Now the radiator mountings, they look like they'll probably clean up perfectly all right and I could use them again if I want to, but probably the new radiator will come with its own. The really interesting thing will be whether I can be jammy enough to actually have them in exactly the same positions, which will save me a lot of hassle with uh, sort of decorating, because obviously there's a paint line there and all that will need to be smoothed down if the new mountings go on in a slightly different place, you know, draw new holes and that. Um, but the valves, they are doing their job. They're not letting any water out whatsoever. Uh, you can cap them off, actually, if you want to. And uh, probably for the next sort of day or two, I'll probably sort of tie a bit of plastic around them or something like that. But they're completely holding fine. And I've given them a polish up. And they're in very, very good condition indeed. Immaculate, uh, except for the nuts. Uh, obviously, the nuts I've used the wrong tool on years ago. And damage the chrome you don't notice at the time but later it catches up with you but I could uh, cosmetically enhance them I dare say and that's the whole point of having the valves isn't it you know to make life easier so um, I'll get a new radiator I'll look into that uh, later today and depending what I end up with if it's ready to drop into those valves uh, then I'll take that definitely and if it's not you know if everything's got to be rejigged then I'll probably you know take the opportunity to replace the valves uh, but why make work for yourself now a couple of couple more things i've got my drain cock here and that's just literally teed off one of the you know pipes to the heating system and the reason i put it there was it's sort of a low point on the system and uh, also it's uh, you know if you get any splashing and whatnot going on it's over a tiled area isn't it so that's quite handy and another little thing to mention i always keep a couple of these handy they're 15 millimeter uh, push fit end stops and uh, if you get a disaster and suddenly one of these comes off in your hand or something and you're faced with a bit of 15 millimeter pipe work 
uh, sort of splashing out water everywhere you can just quickly reach for one of these and bang it on and providing that pipe uh, isn't sort of too clagged up with too much sort of paint or old sealant or something that'll sort of go straight on and get you out of trouble very useful when you're working on your own actually because obviously if you put your thumb over it you can't really reach very far to get anything can you so always keep those handy but that's gone okay uh, as, as I said I'm just going to cover those up have a look into getting another radiator and then everything's got to be all sort of decorated up while that's off so uh, you know plenty of sort of uh, sanding down and cleaning and one thing another the old mountings cleaned up and ready to go Well, as I said, that's the plumbing done for now and I shall spend the rest of the afternoon starting to rub down and prep all the surfaces and also going online and having a look for a suitable tail radiator. See you next time.